Welcome back, dwellers, to another episode of Basement 1F, where the monsters come when the normies get too scary. I'm Mitch. And I'm Scary Sally. Tonight, we're getting into the twisted world of Mad Doctors, ending with a review of the cult favorite, Dr. Giggles. But before we get started with the festivities, I just want to give a shout out to Empire Knight 9220, who way back in our Ghostface video, correctly guessed Tannis Root as the herb in Rosemary's Necklace. Now that's horror knowledge. Kudos, Empire Knight. You staved off Ghostface. For now. Also, dwellers, we've got shirts and other goodies on sale at basement1f.com. We're not going to hit you in the balls too hard with it, but it helps keep the show going. So please take a look. So, mad doctors. You know, without them, half the monsters we love wouldn't even exist. That's true. No Frankenstein without Dr. Frankenstein, and no reanimator without Dr. West. These lunatics are the reason we have some of the most iconic creatures in horror. Exactly. You take away the mad doctor, and you lose the monster. They're like the twisted masterminds behind all our favorite nightmares. Yeah, it's like they're the parents of horror. And just like any bad parenting, things usually go off the rails. Fast. And that's why we love them, right? They're not just creating monsters, they're making horror history. One unhinged experiment at a time. So buckle up, dwellers, because tonight we're giving these twisted geniuses their due. Without them, the monsters would be nothing more than a bad idea on paper. And speaking of bad ideas, when we get back from the break, we'll see which one of these maniacs we'd actually trust as our personal physician. And later, we review Dr. Giggles, right after this. dwellers, it's time to confess. If you had to pick one horror doctor to be your personal physician, who would it be? We'll go around the table and let's see who's brave or crazy enough to make their choice. I'll kick things off. I'm going with Dr. Hannibal Lecter. The guy's a genius, and if I can keep our interactions strictly professional, I might just get the best psychiatric care available. Plus, he's got great taste. Uh, no, no pun intended. Mitch, are you out of your mind? This guy literally eats his patients. One wrong move in your dinner. How can you even relax in a therapy session knowing that? Yeah, Mitch, I'd be too scared to even talk. You'd be watching your back the whole time. I can't believe you trust a guy who could snap at any moment. Literally. It's like a recipe for disaster, man. Fair points, but I'm sticking with Lecter. Now, who's next? All right, I'll go. I'd pick Dr. Victor Frankenstein. The guy's a genius, and if anyone could pull off a miracle, it's him. Just imagine the possibilities. He could fix just about anything. Sure, but at what cost? The guy's got a serious god complex. You might wake up with someone else's arm. Or worse. Yeah, Sally, what if he decides to improve you in ways you don't want? You'd be his next experiment. And don't forget how his last creation turned out. The monster was practically a walking disaster. Are you sure you really want to be his next project? I'll take my chances with Frankenstein. Now, Shadow, who would you choose? Okay, hear me out. I'd pick Dr. Herbert West from Reanimator. I know it sounds risky, but if I had no other options, at least he could bring me back if something went wrong. Better than staying dead, right? Shadow, do you realize that his reanimated patients are zombies and not people anymore? You'd be alive, but you wouldn't really be yourself. And let's be honest, his track record is pretty bad. You'd probably come back with a few screws loose. Plus the guy's obsessed with his experiments. Once he brings you back, who knows what he'll do next? You might end up as part of some horrifying new project where you're like one of a thousand guys like melded together and you walk down a hallway and like you, like, you feel your arms Lumpy? and legs. Hush. Down. Okay. Okay. Maybe West isn't the best choice, but I'd rather take my chances with him than stay dead. Lumpy, who's your pick? I'm going with Dr. Jekyll. I know he's got that whole hide thing going on, but Jekyll himself was a good guy. If I help keep him in control, I think he'd be a solid doctor. But what about Hyde? You never know when he'll show up, and when he does, all bets are off. You might end up on the wrong end of his rage. Lumpster, that's a huge risk. He might be a good doc, but if Hyde shows up, you're blood pudding. It's a gamble I wouldn't take. I get it, but Jekyll's still my choice. At least he's got good intentions, most of the time. You know what? I'm changing my mind. Is Jekyll in my insurance network? Ha! You're all fools. Why waste your time with these so-called doctors when you could have me? 
Dr. Terra Mind, one of the most brilliant minds in all of Terror City. I could be a fantastic doctor. Dr. Terra Mind? I mean, you've got the genius part down, no doubt, but you're not exactly a medical doctor, are you? So, PhDs are just as cool. But your specialty is more in world domination and less in saving lives, Doc. Sorry, Dr. Terramind, but we're looking for someone to help us heal, not conquer the world. Maybe next time, Doc, but we'll keep you in mind if we ever need an evil genius. Ah, you'll regret this when you're begging for my help. And there you have it, dwellers. Let us know below who you would choose as your personal horror doctor. And would you trust Dr. Terramind with your life? Drop your pick in the comments. Attention horror aficionados! Lumpy here to tell you about this week's movie, The Brain That Wouldn't Die. Now this movie is all kinds of crazy and I just can't believe it got made. But we're gonna watch it, but that's not all. We also have the ruler of Terror City himself, Dr. Terramind, in studio. Okay, in apartment. But he's gonna be here and talk about this movie. So come on in and join us this Saturday at midnight. All right, let's talk about Dr. Giggles. This one has a special place for me. Growing up, I had the Dr. Giggles comic book that Dark Horse made. So this is like watching an old friend grow up and go on a rampage. The movie is a slasher through and through. It has dark humor, creative kills, and a villain who's as twisted as they come. Larry Drake absolutely nails it as Dr. Giggles, who has a scalpel in one hand and a punchline in the other. What I really appreciate is this movie doesn't waste any time. It just jumps right into the action when the doc escapes from the mental hospital in the first scene. Action, sure. But it's about as average as you can get. I get that you're all nostalgic for this crap, Mitch, but let's be real here. This movie isn't doing anything new. The kills? More laughable than scary. And don't even get me started on that idiot who couldn't figure out how to put on a condom. Like, seriously? They turned every slasher cliche into a goddamn joke. You're not wrong. It's not breaking any new ground. But that's part of the appeal. Dr. Giggles knows exactly what it is. A straightforward slasher that's here to entertain. It doesn't try to be anything more. And that's why it works for me. The movie leans into the absurdity and it doesn't slow down to overthink itself. Though admittedly, the condom scene was cringy. And the kills. Sure, some of them are creative. But without any real suspense, who gives a shit? And the gore was there, but not all that visceral. Save for the part where the kid cut his way out of his own mother. That was pretty fucking gnarly. But sometimes that's exactly what you need. Not every horror movie needs to be a deep philosophical thriller. Sometimes you just want to see a crazed doctor with a sick sense of humor go to work. And for that, Dr. Giggles delivers. It's fun, ridiculous, and gets right to the point without dragging his feet. Fine, it has its moments, I guess. I'll give it that much. If you're into fun slashers, then yeah, it's got some entertainment value. Exactly. It's not a masterpiece. It's not trying to be but it's a good time if you know what you're getting into. It doesn't break any new ground, but it doesn't need to. Dr. Giggles knows what it is and runs with it. And sometimes that's exactly what you want in a slasher flick. All right, so what are we scoring this? I'm leaning more towards a 2.5. I can live with that. It's not a game changer, but it's fun for what it is. How about you dwellers? What do you think of Dr. Giggles? Let us know in the comments. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Remote cabins. Spend a secluded weekend in a remote cabin. Yes, it's creepy as hell. And no, your cell phone will not work. And buy the new range of masks from Purgewear. Purgewear because they'll remember what you did the next day. And buy new pineapple fudge pop nuts. If you won't budge, try pineapple fudge. In stores now. And there you have it, dwellers. A dive into the twisted minds of mad doctors. And the wildly 90s Dr. Giggles. I gotta say, it's always a blast when we get to talk about these off-the-wall horror flicks. Even if they're a bit outdated and cringy, they still have their place. But hey, that's what makes horror so great. There's something for everyone. Even if that something is a doctor with bad dad jokes and a creepy-ass giggle. But now it's your turn, dwellers. We want to hear from you. What did you think of Dr. Giggles? And if you had to pick a mad doctor as your personal physician, who would you choose? Drop your answer in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the episode. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on all the horrific fun we've got lined up. Hit that notification bell too, because you never know when we'll drop a new video. And trust me, you won't want to miss it. And hey, if you want to support the show and look good doing it, check out our shop at basement1f.com. We've got merch, we've got shirts, and we've got all kinds of goodies that'll make you the envy of any horror fan. 
Plus, every purchase helps us keep the lights on here in the basement so we can keep bringing you the scares you crave. And who knows, maybe we'll even do a shout out to you on our next episode. So until next time, Dwellers, keep your scalpel sharp and your jokes sharper. We'll see you in the next episode of Basement 1F. Stay scary, folks. Thank you.